Monday after Sunday's uh, film review and practice. Good practice for our guys. Certainly, um, they're enthused about uh, you know the season, getting game one underneath our belts. Looking for uh, lots of areas where we can continue to work on some things we got better, some things we need to improve upon more. Um, from an injury standpoint, Drew Mathis is the one to update out you guys on. He uh, he'll be out for this weekend for sure. Um, you know, sustained a leg injury, but we hope that it uh, won't be real long term. Uh, aside from that, you know, day to day, I know a lot of guys want to ask about Kayvon and how he's doing. You know, he's improving, so that will be a day to day thing. And you know, by Tuesday, Wednesday, I'll give you guys an update on him. But looking forward to getting uh, after it. Obviously, guys are watching film. They know we have a tremendous challenge and opportunity coming up this weekend. With that being said, questions. Dennis Dog, CBS Sports. We'll start it off. Mari, you said Tuesday or Wednesday on Kayvon. Is he, um, is he just getting treatment? Are you trying to work through it? Or where is that right now? Yeah, all that stuff right there. That's what, you know, he got rolled upon him. You know, you guys saw it on film. You know, one of the... Uh, one of their linemen had, had driven one of our guys into the ground. He rolled into the back of his legs, caught his ankle a little bit. So he has an ankle sprain, and that's what we're working through. Dan Hope, 11 Warriors. Hey, Mario. And obviously you guys are, you know, having to travel to Columbus this week. You're playing, you know, it would be 9 a.m. local time. I'm just curious, like, what's the preparation like for you guys? Sure. It's a little bit different in the sense that we'll leave here on Thursday. Instead, after we do our Thursday mental sweat day, uh, and we'll land over there approximately seven, eight o'clock, um, get settled in, you know, roll out the, you know, how we need to before we um, get to bed that night and have our fast Friday preparation over there and roll right into the game. So it's, uh, you know, typical what you see of, of West Coast teams when they travel east, you just go. Eric Scopel, 247 Sports. A couple weeks ago when DJ and Jamal rejoined the team, you said they'd be unavailable for Fresno State. Is that is there a status change at all for Ohio State? What's the latest with those two? They'll be available for this weekend, and they'll be listed on the uh, on our organizational chart we release here in a little bit right after this press conference. Jerry Thompson, Ducks Illustrated. Yeah, Coach, the explosion plays one of your biggest concerns. I mean, six touchdowns, Ohio State averaged 50, almost 55 yards per touchdown. So is that one of your biggest concerns? Well, they they, they possess a, a lot of different weapons on that team, and they make a lot of explosive plays in the run and the pass game. It starts up front, too. They have a great offensive line and a great defensive line. The sack fumble certainly turned that game around for them as well. Uh, but their ability to protect the quarterback and give them time to scan the field and get the ball down the field, the guys that are really explosive, really fast, and have great um, ball skills, yeah, they, uh, they're they a great offense, great football team with elite talent. Zach Neal, Ducks Wire. You're muted, Zach. Sorry about that. Uh, wide receiver Troy Franklin was listed at number one on the depth chart going into last week, and we didn't see much of him. He had zero targets. Was that an injury thing, or was it more of a matchup? What, what went into that decision? Yeah, it was. He got nicked up during the week in practice. He was slated to be the starter, has had a great camp, uh, had a great spring, and got nicked up. So he was uh, limited come game time. Now, we feel that throughout the course of the game, he was back to full speed and had a great practice yesterday. So we expect him to be back to normal. But that is a reason why he was limited in terms of his play count. Jared Mack, 247 Sports. Coach, with you constantly rotating offensive line, do you ever worry about like the continuity of it not working or they might not gel together? No, we don't. We're playing the guys that we feel can play at a high level uh, and guys that can execute what we're trying to get done. At the same time, it prepares us for should there be an injury, should there be some type of issue where guys have to play other positions. The techniques that overlap uh, gives us confidence that they're repping the right stuff in the right spots. So, no, we don't have a concern with that. Max Torres, Ducks Digest. Coach, uh, Brandon Dorlis did uh, pretty well for you guys on, on Saturday. I believe he played most of his season last year on the interior. Most of you guys are moving him out wide a little bit. Uh, can you shed some light on kind of what went into that? Well, he was pretty versatile for us last year. If you recall, towards the end of the season uh, in the uh, the conference championship game, we he played a lot of the edge stuff. And the game leading up to that, he played some of the four-eye, bounced outside to a five as well. Very versatile guy, 285 pounds plus that he can move. So um, 
He's very explosive. He's got a great feel for the game, both run and pass. Uh, he plays with power. He's also athletic enough to, to make guys miss and affect the quarterback. And he's very intelligent. So uh, that, that allows for him, uh, it allows for his versatility to be a reality in terms of game day. So, and he's in really good shape, got a lot of snaps and, you know, we can expect them to play a lot of snaps again this week. James Krapia, the Oregonian. Mario, on KT, is it possible for him to play without practicing at all this week and with Swinson behind him with the chance to watch film? What did you see from Braden on a pretty large sample size of plays? Well, again, playing is going to be dependent upon a guy being able to practice. If a guy can't practice, you know, I don't think it's – in his best interest and a team's best interest to put a guy out there that hasn't been able to rep. So we'll take it day by day. In terms of Braden, Braden showed uh, that he can, he's going to be, and is working on being a really good football player. He, uh, in the run game, did a really good job minus one assignment. Um, he used his hands really well. Uh, he was real good in terms of communication. He affected the passer on a number of different occasions. Uh, he he's, he played fast. And uh, it's what we expected of him. He's developing into a really good football player, and his role will continue to increase. Ryan Milano, KWVA. Justin Flo, what type of job did you see from him stepping up for Drew in Fresno State, and what will you need to see from him in Ohio State? Oh, he's a game changer. You know, I, I had about almost 15 tackles all over the field, plays with incredible passion, forcing turnovers, really aggressive. You know, he's what uh, – it's the vision, right? You know, seeing those guys playing side by side out there, um, really impressive. And uh, the fact he just he just doesn't get tired. He just goes. So against an offense like Ohio State, you have to be on point. You have to, from a discipline standpoint, execution standpoint, uh, you can't have any busts. You can't. They'll expose you. They showed that. And, you know, they're a, Ohio State's ability to make big plays is um, a complete, uh, you know, reflection of, how precise they are and what they do. They're very well coached. Um, they know what to do, how to do it, why they're doing it that way. And they attack you. They're aggressive. They don't sit back and, you know, kind of hope things happen. Very aggressive in the run game, in the pass game. Um, they're creative. Uh, they're Again, like I said, they're well coached. So our guys, like uh, anytime you go on the road and you play a great football team, nothing but your best is going to be good enough. And our guys understand that. Matt Preem, 247 Sports. Right, you didn't take a lot of shots downfield against Fresno State. How much of that was just maybe Anthony not throwing the football or how much of it was the offensive line not giving the ample protection to allow him to throw the football and just game plan? Well, we try to take a couple. You know, we hit one, um, missed one coming out. You know, we uh, we were in a protection where the mic slipped through and Anthony stepped up, tried to hit the post, missed him, uh, hit Johnny on one, real good play by the defensive back, got a pass interference on another. Um, and then a couple other ones, we just ran out of time, throw the football and, and Anthony ran. So uh, it's always in the game plan. You want to stretch a defense vertically and horizontally. I think sometimes it's a misconception when it's like, well, it, it wasn't the game plan. No, it's always part of the game plan. And certainly we planned for it. Sometimes it didn't just work out because it either got taken away or maybe we ran out of time to throw the football. But uh, we have confidence in it and uh, we're going to continue to emphasize it and get better results. Luciano Chatelaine, end zoners. Hey, Coach, and Sonos Latin American Network over here. Uh, this weekend, we had three upsets by teams outside of the Power Five against Pac-12 teams. Would you say that is more of an indictment on the Pac-12 and some of its teams declining, or is it only a statement on how much less powerful programs are showing growth and college football is becoming more balanced in general? Oh, that's a good question. You know, I wish uh, I had time to watch some of those other games. You know, we're so focused on us during the course of the season. But I just think it's a reflection of football that on any Saturday, if you're not playing at your best, that you can and you will get beat. So, and I think what happens is, you know, after a, a pandemic year where super seniors are in play and a transfer portal is active, uh, teams don't look quite the same at the end of one year and at the start of the next year. So I'm sure all those things factor into it. And sometimes teams just find a way to win. So, it's a really good question, and um, but you know I think a lot of things play into that. Dennis Dodd, uh, Mario, how much have you looked forward to this game? I know you were 
you know, sick about losing the game last year, but just as a benchmark for the program, everything else. Well, I mean, if you're a real competitor, um, you always want to test yourself against the very best. And Ohio State's an elite program from top to bottom, storied program, tremendous history um, at a place where they've had tremendous success. So I think, uh, you know, you, you come to a place like Oregon to have opportunities like this, understanding, you know, the tremendous opportunity it is, the tremendous challenge it is, um, just going against the very best. I don't think I don't think anyone that's ever played football that loves a game for what it is would want anything less than to go up and play against the very best. So we have that opportunity this week. Dan Hope. Hey, Mario, I know that you uh, recruited C.J. Stroud, some out of high school, just wondering kind of what stood out to you about him then and kind of what stands out now that you see him within Ohio State's offense. Oh, yeah, no, he's a guy we recruited we really wanted here. Um, poise, accuracy, um, can improvise, can make plays with his arm, with his feet, complete understanding and command of an offense. Uh, like he, like he, Kind of like he showed the other day, you know, he, uh, he can make every throw. Um, he's really smart. He's a guy that you just watched him, you know, in high school. He understood his protections. He knew where he was protected, where he wasn't. Just overall, just a, a great player, real, real difference maker in high school. Eric Scopel, 247 Sports. Coach, I thought the kicking game in general was a strong suit on Saturday. Tom, in particular, had some booming punts that kind of maintained some momentum, maybe kept it from going towards Fresno State. Maybe speak about the growth you've seen from both Tom and Camden and Camden in particular, and, and, and holding off Hunt Henry for this job? Kicking game was a huge plus on Saturday. I think he hit the nail on the head. Tom flipped the field for us a couple of different occasions. We had a chance to down one at the one-yard line, too, and, um, you know, which tremendous learning opportunity for us also. Tom's worked himself into being a really good punter. And, you know, besides one, maybe two that he'd like to have back, he really had a huge impact on the game. So did the coverage units on those particular uh, punts. Uh, also, on the flip side, you know, the, the kicking battle was really intense because at the end of last year, you know, Cattleman had won it and rightfully so. And he entered the uh, offseason as a starter. But if you're going to make competition real, you got to let it play out. And even though it went back and forth, there was there was considerable separation. And so uh, that's why Cam went out there and kicked off. And that's why he went out there for the field goal. And Cam put four of six, I believe, in the end zone as touchbacks. Um, he was one for one on field goals, got his extra points. So credit to those guys for just working, grinding, sticking to it. They made a tremendous impact on the game. Zach Neal, Duxwire. After watching film from last week, what are some things that you really take away as positives from Anthony Brown? And where do you think that he can get better going forward? Yeah, Anthony was solid. You know, his decision making both the run game and the pass game um, was fairly high. There's probably two in each that he'd like to have back. I thought that when there was pressure in there when that pocket got compressed, that he found a way to make things happen with his legs. Uh, he kept his eyes down the field as well to see if there's a potential opportunity there. Thought his deep ball was spot on. The post ball, you know, of course you'd like a little bit of a better throw, but I mean, a mic came flat out free and he had to scoot by him and get rid of it before the end smashed him. So, and then you look at the bootleg down at the goal line, you know, even though it's a difficult catch, I mean, he puts it right on the receiver and for what should be a touchdown, what could be a touchdown. So I thought, man, he, um, and then at the end of fourth and two, you put the game in his hands and he comes through with a 32 yard touchdown run. So all in all, just very pleased with him, his progress, um, the way he attacks it. I, I want to especially mention his demeanor on the sideline, how he's demanding more of himself and the way that he generates just positivity on the sideline from his linemen, from his wide receivers, just constant juice and energy. He's a, He's a real competitor, you know, and he wants to do well. He wants his teammates to do well. And uh, there's nothing, you know, he feels confident where there's nothing that this offense, this team can't overcome. Max. Coach, you've uh, definitely turned this program around and got it headed in the right direction since taking over. Uh, big test with Ohio State this week. What do you want the perception of Oregon to be following this game? What are you hoping for it to be? Oh, I don't think it changes game to game. Actually, you know, it's, it's always going to be shooting to be the very best and be one to know on a weekly basis. Um, I don't think uh, I don't I don't have any slogans, man. You know, I don't I don't have any cool T-shirts that I come up with or whatnot. We uh, we're just completely hunkered in, hunkered down all the time, improving and developing our guys, 
bringing in great talent, um, working hard. It's what we do. And, you know, opportunities like this are, I mean, these are, you don't get many of these in your lifetime, you know, and that being said, it still comes down to making sure that your process and your preparation to give your players the very best chance to be successful. That's how we look at it. You know, we, uh, the focus is not on all the noise surrounding the game. We understood, I mean, all summer we had to kind of block out questions that revolved around this game because no one wanted to talk about the first game. Well, now it's game week and this game is finally here. So you acknowledge, you know, that this is a prime time game on a big stage and in front of just about everybody, right. that's watching. And so, uh, you're extremely excited about it. Um, but you know that every ounce of your potential success in a game play by play is completely dependent upon your preparation and your focus and your ability to execute, you know, under duress, under pressure. So, um, our guys are excited. We just want to get to work, get the process rolling. James. Mario, right, we talked a little bit about last week about offensive identity. When rubber hit the road there at the end, you turned to CJ a lot and he came through for you as he has so many times before. You've turned to him to varying degrees in these big games, whether Pac-12 title game in 19, Wisconsin, Auburn, all that season. How do you see his role, his importance as just such a foundational pillar for who your, what your offense is and how important he is entering a game like this. You know, he's critically important, you know, when you talk about um, establishing identity and identity, you want to be physical, you want to be balanced, then you want to score points. And right, the, the key to making sure you continue to, you know, elevate in this industry is you want to continue to evolve. You want to, if you're on offense, you want to score points. If you're on defense, you want to prevent people from scoring points. So, you know, wrinkles come with that. Schematic changes come with that, you know, coaching changes and adaptations. So uh, we never want to lose our physicality, but we certainly want to be more explosive all the time. We didn't get the explosive plays that we thought um, we were capable of having in game one, but they're there to be had and we have to improve upon that. But it starts with basics and fundamentals and techniques and executing. And CJ is a huge part of that because they come in the run game. They come in the pass game. They come sometimes in the form of when he's protecting to get a ball off. So uh, him and Travis, you know, we, we like to speak of them in the same sentence because, you know, those two together, they've played a lot of football for us. We depended on them in big games and big moments, and they've come through. And um, certainly I know they'll have a great week of preparation. Warren Williamson, Oregon Duck Football News. Kind of along that same line, Mario, you've had a chance to look at the film. How did you grade out the offensive line, the things that you really liked, and maybe some of those things that you need to improve on, especially going against Ohio State? Sure. Uh, well, things I really like, I like the fourth quarter. I like the fact that they just really just played on edge and got downhill in the run game and protected well. Uh, things you like to do better. You, you'd like to keep the pocket cleaner, right, be a little bit more consistent. Uh, on some of the stuff, but uh, they played hard. I was pleased with the fact of how we played. Not technically and fundamentally, we weren't on point all the time, but there were some really bright moments for some guys and other times that we'd like to have those moments back and execute and perform better. So um, solid in some senses, need improvement in some other ones, and finish strong. Last question goes to Matt Preem, 247 Sports. Speaking with the offensive line, Mario, I think Dawson Jaramillo played three snaps against Nevada in 2019, didn't play at all the rest of the way through 2020, and then was out in the fourth quarter, um, I think, on one of your scores to either tie it or take the lead. Just his play, his development, and, you know, what he did against Fresno State. Yeah, I remember seeing Dawson uh, when I went to his high school, seeing him at a distance, they told me he was a soccer player a goalie that maybe one day he could be a, a really good offensive lineman. That's several years ago. And uh, I think 2017 upon first arrival and Dawson since day one has always been a dedicated, committed guy, pours himself into the weight room, the film room, total team player and had an injury a little over a year ago, rehab came back strong, had a great off season and without a doubt proved himself in camp that he's a guy that can contribute and help us win. So he was put in there because he earned it. And he had he played well and he's going to help us win. He's going to keep playing more and more. So really proud of him. Uh, excited for him and his future here at Oregon. Thank you, coach. Appreciate your time. Good luck this weekend. OK, thanks, guys. Appreciate you.